Hi everyone, my name is Federico Tartarini and in this video I will try to quickly explain which are the main differences between input and include in LaTeX. In order to explain how to use input and include, I'm going to use Overleaf because it's a nice tool that is web-based and I'm going to use that for this example, but that of course will also work if you compile your latex document locally. I'm going to start first with input because input is super simple to understand. Input allows us to take some part of our latex document, such as this section here, and move it to another file, and then input this text inside this main document, as it, if it was here. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm here inside the directory, I'm going to create a new folder, which I'm going to call it chapters. I'm going to create. Inside chapters, I'm going to create a new file, which is called to, I'm going to be called introduction. Now we want to move the introduction from here, because we want to clean our main file inside the introduction here. So we're just going to copy and paste this text. So let me recompile the document. As you will see, the introduction here is going to disappear in our PDF because you have removed it to the main document and the numbering also has changed of the section. Now we go back to the main text. We use the command input and then we are going to specify which uh, file we want to input. In this case, we want to import from chapters introduction.txt. We don't have to specify the extension. If we recompile the document, which I can do with Ctrl Enter, we will see that the document is going to look as it was before. And here we have the introduction. So basically, input what it does is that it processes the text file as if the content of this file was actually written here. It just allows us to make this file here a little bit shorter, the main file a little bit shorter. And this can come, come up handy. Because, for instance, if you're writing a paper, you can subdivide your paper into introduction, methodology, uh, results, discussion and conclusion. So you can have the four different uh, sections. Maybe instead of chapters, I should have called it sections. And then you could use input. So different people can work on a different file in different moments. Input also has other advantages because it works also if it's nested. So let me go inside here again in chapters. I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it subsection. So inside this subsection, I'm just going to copy some boilerplate code. Don't worry too much about it. It's just Latin text, just a placeholder. And inside introduction, I'm going to use input. And then in this case, we are importing subsections. So let me recompile this file here, and here will appear the subsection. As you can see, 1.1 subsection. Another thing that could have been nice, I could have had, instead of this introduction here, just another input, I could have created another file which uh, contains the code for the figure. So I'm going to say figure 1, and this is going to be the last example that I'm going to show you with input, and I'm just going to extract this code here. So I'm just going to remove it here and I'm just going to put it inside the figure here. And then uh, let me just uh, copy and paste this file here. And then here we're going to import uh, with the input uh, and we're going to import the figure. So now we should see introduction, then we should see the figure and then the subsection. Perfect. So everything is working and I think it's pretty much clear. So basically, just to summarize, you can use input basically everywhere in any content. So you can use it in the preamble, inside packages, in the document, wherever you want. You can nest input macros one inside the other, as I did here. So we have main, which uses input, and we are importing introduction. And inside introduction, we are importing the figure and the subsection. This sometimes also can end it because you can clean up a bit the code if you're sending, for instance, this paper uh, to your supervisor and he wants to review the paper. And uh, basically, the only thing that input does is that uh, it just imports this file here as if the file was written actually here. So it has, it has no side effects. So one only downside of input is the following. So if I go back into main text, uh, and uh, I don't want to compile the introduction for a second because let's say that the introduction is very long, uh, contains a lot of images and slows down uh, my document. So if I put uh, a percentage sign, uh, 
So I comment out this line. When I recompile the document, then the section are not going to be number as in the final document. Because if I re-enable this and I'm going to enable it again, you will see that conclusion is section number two. Okay? So that's a thing that you need to keep in mind. It's not a big problem in a paper, but it's something that you want to keep it in mind because it's going to mess up a little bit the number of, of the section. Include partially fixes, fixes this problem. So when we use include, we are going to have a way of keeping the structure of the document intact, even if you are not including some of the section. However, comes with a lot of downsides, which you need to know about because uh, it might not be what you actually want. So let me change a bit this code here because as it's written right now, it's not going to work. So let me just copy the text of figure one inside the introduction. So I'm just going to copy this text here and I'm going to copy the subsection code inside the introduction as well. Here we are. Okay. So I'm going to, for a second, delete this file, figure one, and I'm going to delete this subsection. And I will explain why I'm doing this. So instead of using input, we're going to use this time, we're going to use including. We're going to use include. So we have to use the same syntax. So include uh, curly braces, chapters, introduction. Let's recompile the file and let's see the main differences. As you can see, we can already see the main differences between include and input. The main difference is that include prepend this command and it adds also a clear page at the end of this command. So as you can see, then all the sections are going to be separated with a clear page. This could be a problem. Let me show you actually we're removing this subsection for a second. So let me comment this out and let me recompile the document because it's going to be clearer because right now you cannot really see the include command instead of the input command has a major difference. It adds a clear page before, as you can see here, we have a clear page. So this page is going to be empty and we have a clear page after because as you can see here, conclusion is coming on the second page. So this is a big downside or it's not maybe a big downside for you because you're writing a, a book and you wanted each chapter or each section is in a new page, but this is something that you need to wear about. Another downside, and that's why I changed the code before, is that you can only use include, but you cannot have includes nested in another include. What do I mean with that? So if you go back here, chapters, and I'm going to create again subsection, and then inside here, we are going to copy and paste this code that we have actually commented out. So let me copy and paste this code and let copy it here. So I just want to show you what we are doing at the moment. So right now we just have the introduction, which we have imported with the um, include. And so everything is as before. So is, is if now in the introduction, we want to use the command include because we want to include this subsection inside the introduction. So let's try to compile this and we're going to get an error. As you can see, we're getting an error because you cannot use include nested into a document which is also included in another document. You can use input though. So if you go in introduction and you change this instead of include to input, then we can compile the document and everything is going to be working fine. So this is also another thing that you need to keep in mind. If you decide to change a bit the order of your file, so your structure of your file, with input, you didn't have any side effects. With include, you cannot include, uh, nest the two commands in two documents. The biggest benefit, though, of using include instead of input is that we can use the command include only. Let me show you that. So inside your chapters, we are going to create a new file and we're going to call this file conclusions. And we're going to create it. And inside here, we are going to copy the conclusion text here. So we're going to copy it here. And we go back into main text and we use include. And then we include the conclusion. 
So let me recompile this file. It exactly looks as before because we have the introduction, we have the conclusion, and of course, after the conclusion, now we have a clear page because I already explained that before, and then we have the references in the last page. What is the main advantage of using uh, include? Is that we can use include only. So as I previously mentioned, our document can become quite large and uh, we might have a lot of files to compile, a lot of figures and so forth. Let's say that now I'm just working on the conclusion. With the input, the only option that we had was to comment this section out. Let me do it. And of course, we can do it also with the include command. But this again messes up uh, the numbering of the section. So instead of doing this, uh, we can use the command include only. So we can say include only. And then inside here, we just have to include the chapter that we want. So we include this inside here and we recompile the document. Great, so we don't get any error, but as you can see now conclusion is correctly numbered because conclusion is number two and also the page number is correct. This is going to be how it's going to look in the final document. And this is because when we use the command include, uh, LaTeX is creating an auxiliary file for us uh, specifically, so can keep track of the page number, references and everything. It's really up to you to choose which one do you prefer now that you know the differences. Remember that, to conclude, that input has no side effects. It can be used nested, it can be used anywhere, and it's basically like just having the text over there. It's just a way of cleaning up a bit the files. Include, on the other end, offers this extra functionality, which you can use the include only, but comes with a lot of downsides. The one is that it adds a clear page between the sections or between the include. So here we have a clear page between introduction and a clear page between, uh, between the conclusion and the next uh, section. And also it cannot be nested inside. But it has the advantage that we can use this command include only that is going to preserve the final look of the document. And as you can see here, we have the title page in page number one, and we are not displaying page number two, and we have page number three. This could come handy if you just want to, for instance, generate the appendix of your document, and you want to preserve the original, the correct numbering and the correct page number. I really hope you find this video useful. If I was not clear, please leave a comment down in the comment section below, and I will try to answer as soon as possible. And if you found this video interesting and useful, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. It really helps. And if you would like me to generate more video like this one, please consider supporting my channel by buying me a coffee. I have a link in the description on how you can support my channel with buying a coffee. Thank you very much for listening and see you next time.